I would be a horrible beatboxer. The future allows because I really love it here. Shout out for Camelot Cellars um, for allowing me to use their location. They are located on 901 Oak Street, 43205 in Columbus, Ohio. They're open Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Come out, listen to some smooth music, get you some good wine in, and enjoy yourself. Again, I'm Miss Champagne B. If you have a moment, check me out on Instagram, Miss Champagne B. Follow me, because I would love to be followed. And definitely hit the notification bell and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay caught up on the latest videos that comes out. So, what are we talking about today? Bartending. I mean, well, we normally talk about bartending a lot, right? But not just bartending. Today, I want to tell you what you can do to start your bartending love at home. Now, a lot of people think that you have to go to schools or you have to have all these fancy tools, but no, you can start your home bartending kit for less than $20. Yes, 20 buckaroos. So, let's go over some of the tools that you might wanna have in your home to start your bartending life, or to start your life as a bartender. So first, Jigger what? This is a jigger. Jiggers are used to measure your alcohol, your liqueur, your mixers, whatever it is, jiggers are used to measure out the liquids that you are pouring into your drink. Now, some people do something called free pour, which allows you to pour um, your bottle of liquor um, using a, a spout or a pour, depending on where you're at, and you can count the seconds it takes for the liquid to come down and you're able to identify how much liquid you've used. For instance, a lot of us may use a four count. Four counts gives you one ounce of liquor. And this is great to know, but sometimes if you have a craft cocktail, you don't want to really be off at all. You always want to make sure you measure the exact amount of liquor every single time so you get the same type of taste each time. Jiggers are great because they come in multiple sizes. Some are tall, some are small, some are short, some are skinny. But the great thing about Jiggers is, I hope you guys can see it, they have the size on it. There you go. One ounce. And then below, it's usually like a half ounce. So let's see. Yep. If you can see it, see, let the light catch it. Oh, I want to guys. Yeah, there you go. Half ounce. Jiggers normally can have one ounce, which is the larger side, or they can add a half ounce on the bottom, or sometimes it can be different. Um, you might have some that's a two ounces on the top and one ounce at the bottom. Some might be an ounce and a half and then three quarters of an ounce below, whatever it is. But if you're not sure how many ounces your jigger measures, you wanna make sure you look at the little engravings on your jigger. That way you don't that way you know how much you should pour and to ensure that you're not over pouring or under pouring but if you're not into using a jigger to measure there is something else that other people like to use to measure they like to count and when you count it's important to see um when you're counting, usually counting uses something called a pour. This is what's always going to be on your liquors, depending on where you're at, your mixers. This allows your drinks to come out easily, right? Um, to measure it this way, freehand pour, as people may call it, this is when you use the counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
let's see. I always like to, I always like to practice see how good I am with my fours. One, two, three, four. Ooh, that looks like that's too heavy. One, two, three, four. Now, I will say when you're practicing your speed pour and your counts, um, you want to use something a little bit richer than water. Water is much more, um, it's going to flow a little bit faster than your liquor. So even though it's probably quicker, one, two, three, four, All right? And then I measure it by putting it in here. See how much I'm on point? A little over. Hmm. But it's also because it's water. Liquor has a, is a, is may not be as thin as water, so people are practicing your pours. Um, some people ask you to do um, to actually mix a little something into your water so it could be more of a consistency for liquor. Um, or if you're at home, I mean it's your liquor, so keep practicing. But pours are great. Pours pours are great because they fit inside your bottles. They pour all the time. You can stay at home and practice your pouring, your speed pouring. They're pretty nice. Um, I like metal pours. You also have people who use plastic pours. I do not like plastic pours because they get really sticky quicker, in my opinion. And then once they get sticker, sticky, it's hard for you to get a really good, decent, quick speed pour. So I like to get a metal pour. So, you know, that's just me personally. Another thing that you should have, but you may already have, is this. You might hear it called a wine key, a wine service. Um, you'll hear all kinds of people call it things. But this is how you can open up your beer bottles and open up your wine bottles. Um, you have this lovely little beer opener right here. Pop, pop. Or a bottle opener, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Pop, pop. Then you have your screw. Goes down to your wine. Then you have your little baby knife. <laughs> I'm sure it's not called a baby knife, but we're gonna call it a baby knife. I like to use these because um, sometimes your liquor has the little wraps, and even when your wines has the wraps around the top, you can take it, boom, cut it, you know, like you're a murderer or not, and pull it right off. And then you can go and use this to help take your, cup, your uh, pork out your bottle. So this is very handy. If you ever wanna um, bartend in a business, in a location, you really have to have one of these. This shows how um, advanced you are. Either you use this one, and then there's a long one, which I also have. Um, it's kind of long and flat, and that's what they use for beer bottles. If you're in an environment where you're serving tons and tons of beer, that may be better for you because it's flat, it's always available, versus you always having to pull this out, and potentially this breaking over time. A bar spoons. See, bar spoons are different than a regular spoon, right? Because of the way you stir with a bar spoon, it has these little grooves in it. Kind of like twists, right? As you see, it goes up, it goes up, it goes up, and comes all the way down. It's designed so when you stir, it still stirs with you versus you having to feel all awkward with a spoon. When you're stirring in your cup, you put it in here, you want to make sure your spoon is on the outside outside of your cup. It, the, the, the booty or the spoon or the back of the spoon should always be in your glass. See, it doesn't come off. 
This helps with the stirring, helps make sure you're getting all the ingredients in there. And the curves helps you guide it around much easier. Some people are cold and they can do two at once. I'm not there yet, but maybe one day. You don't have to have this, um, but this is great because not all drinks should be shaken. Some drinks should be stirred, depending on the type of spirits that you are using. If you don't have a bar spoon, do not fret. I would add it to your list. But there's another way that you can mix up your drinks that may be better shaken than stirred. Martini is not one of them. Sorry. A shaker. Now these are Boston shakers. Boston shakers usually have these two metal parts of the tin. Um, at this location, we do not use the metal parts. We have a glass, a pint that we do use for our shakers. I'll show you how it goes. Usually if you have a glass, some people like to um, use a cobble uh, shaker. Cobble shakers, I'll show you that a little bit later down the line. But that one has a top to it and you just seal it on top and you can shake it that way. I like it because my hands are smaller and it feels a little better, but these aren't bad either. Um, how you use your shaker. So first, we're gonna get some ice. Boom, we got your ice. Then we're gonna put in a liquid. Your mixer, for the sake of just today, I'm just using water. I'm just using water. Then we're gonna put it in your shaker. Don't forget to give it a nice little tap on the top to help seal it. Then shake, baby. Shake what your mama gave you. When you shake, the coldness inside of it is gonna make your uh, your shakers contract, and it might be hard to get your top out, see? A little hard. So if this happens to you, what I don't recommend is to never bang this up against your bar. I've seen too many people break the glass on the inside, you've ruined your drink, you've ruined your cred, it's just a crazy show. So in this case, you're gonna take the butt of your, the, the, the bottom of your hand right here where it's meaty and hit it right back here where it's connected where it's the smooth straight line get a nice little tap see voila then we're going to pour get all the goodies because all the goodies is down in and get all the goodies and in essence we'd have a cocktail Let's say you don't want all that ice in there. A great thing for you to use, Hawthorne strainers. There's several types of strainers that you might come across. Hawthorne is my favorite because it fits in so many of the glasses or the, the cups that we use. You're gonna take your strainer, put it inside your cup, and as you see, the spring fits in there, kinda hugs it like a sexy glove. Holds it, and then you're allowed to pour out your liquid while keeping the ice and whatever other goodies that you have mixed on the inside of your cup. Do right, I know. <clears throat> tongs, that tongs, the tongs, tongs, tongs. The tongs, song. Tongs are great because they allow you to pick up your ice individually. It allows you to pick up your fruits and all your other garnishes without having to touch them with your hands. Although if your hands are clean, some people prefer their hands. Me personally, especially right now where it's COVID, tongs are really good for you to use. Great, in fact, tongs. And finally, if you wanna be one of those students that go above and beyond, you might wanna get yourself one of these things. I don't know, it's not what you think it is. It is a muddler. If you look at the bottom, the muddlers have these little spikes there. Look at those spikes. All the better to muddle, my dear. <laughs> muddlers are great. You, you tend to see them with mojitos where they sit there and they muddle the mint and the soda and the sugar together. Muddlers are amazing things to use. You might not use them every day because everything doesn't need to be muddled, but off the brain, mojitos, you know, there's some muddling there. And old fashions, there's some slight muddling in there as well. So, 
If you have all of these things in your bar, you have a great starter kit so you too can start bartending today, oi, right now. If you don't have all these things, don't fret. Remember, you can get everything that you saw here today for less than $20. So with everything that I have here, let's make us a little baby cocktail, right?
Have a great day. Bye. My bitch is bad and bougie. Cooking up dope with a oozy. My niggas are savage, ruthless. We got the